tons of measurements. Can't go wrong with lots of measurements. Now this little square here comes in really handy doing the inside of the beams, webs, and my stir it. Okay. First measurement is going to be for the bracket. So I need to go seven eighths. That and I use, I don't use soapstone too much because of the oil and stuff, you know, it just blows the soapstone off. Soapstone is nice, like if you're rough doing something rough. But I use these silver streak pencils. You can get these any welding supply or usually sold around where the welding stuff is sold. Um, okay, seven eighths and three and seven eighths. Next measurement seventeen and a sixteenth. That and you can get finer you can get down to a finer point. So you can mark a sixteenth, you know, with a silver streak. And twenty and a sixteenth. And then my whole centers are at twenty one and a quarter. And twenty four and a quarter. All these center line for my bracket. There's my center marks for my holes. Three inch centers. Now to get this one a little different. I mean, I can get my twenty-one and a quarter, and my twenty-four and a quarter, <clears throat> run this out the all the way out, and I use. The blade has the straight edge up against the web. Now you got to make sure a lot of webs are they're tapered, so you need to actually, you know, you need to hold it up or hold the square body. Make sure this is setting on, so this is actually, you know, what I'm saying. So I put that up against the web. That's where it gets fun. You take this. I'll take my square and go across here, set it at the, the length of the beam, because I'm measuring, I need to measure from the outside. So you can't really put a tape measure in here and measure out. So I'll set this square on the line, put this square up to it. 
then I'll move the square to my measurement up here. If you had a square edge up down here, you could just do two of them and use your square, but I don't trust my saw that much to an inch and a half from the outside. Bought this, uh, bought, I actually bought two of them on uh, Craigslist and sort of newish in the box, two of them. I don't know why one guy would have two of them that were newish in the box. I didn't ask, don't care. I got, he wanted pretty decent money for, you know, a piece. I mean, cheap, less than half of what. This is like eight hundred dollars new, um, and then I even got a better deal by buying both of them. Yeah, I kind of like it. Other than bits are a little, they're not like the slugger. Let me get a bit. I mean, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it. A few other tubers got them. That this is like the uh, Jancy slugger and that brand type you know that a lot of them keep the same type of attachment you know you got that's it i had to modify this i'll show you in a second what i had to do but here's here's original kind of to this machine that's what it works on but what i have available to me around here is this style You know, brand new bought it this morning. But then I made the attachment that fits what should be in there. The only bad thing is that I lose, you know, the, the height of my bit. I mean, this is a one inch, but then that also gains another inch of, uh, of what I, I'll lose on a thickness of a plate. I had to make all these push pins because of the, uh, you know how they work, it, there's there's a spring up in there and that's just a, your lineup pin but then it also as you're drilling through it goes up and puts pressure on the spring up in there and then when it blows through the spring pressure pops the little slug out and I got a couple of them here. Yeah, just like that. Pops them out, and they go shooting across, and they hit the floor, and bounce wherever.
these to go on down here. And that's something else you'll notice about the, the beams. They're not, they're not parallel or whatever you want to call it. They're just not straight. This web could be a little higher than this side, but this side here is on pretty much spot on six inches. This side's a little lower. And sometimes they're not even true. They, they could be skewed just a little bit. It kind of makes a pain in the butt to put end plates on square. So, so what I'll probably do is get my plate back out here and I'll set them down and I'll set turn the beam up on end and do it that way. Because sometimes I put clamps on them to make them square. Okay, I got all those tacked together. Now I'll work on, I'll get the, get the plate in here, the three quarter inch plate. That one's upside down, so in case you're wondering. Um, yeah, I'll clean up in here a little bit and get that plate in here. And then I'll set this, I'll pick a side that I want for the top. Make sure that's down and we'll get this, I like to get this all bolted together on the plate and square it up with the plate and I can center punch all the holes that are going to be drilled and tapped in the plate. Now I got 5 8 bolts that are going to go up through that. Now I figure I might have to shim here and there but I took my time on welding them. Some of these have little bits of gap in them where they weren't. I just needed my measurement from the top here to the bottom. And these were all bandsaw cut. And I've never seen a straight bandsaw yet. So there's a little tiny gap. You can barely get the tip of a screwdriver in, but it was, you know, I needed that 332nd gap just to make it. To the measurement. Try to eliminate as much shim as I can. Alright, I'll bring you back. 